And I'm going to, um, because I believe the prophetic word that Dr. Savell spoke last week, I believe it ties totally connected with synergy, totally connected with what I've been dealing with in this aspect of synergy. And the prophetic word was this, marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. Amen. Amen. Say that with me. Marvels, marvels wonders, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. Amen. See, that is, you know, the whole aspect of synergy is God getting connected with man. The whole aspect of synergy is God doing what he wants to do in the earth. And I believe he wants to do marvels, wonders, and extraordinary things in your life. He wants to reveal his greatness in your life. He wants to manifest his greatness in your life. He wants to manifest the glory of God in your life. He wants to manifest not just when you come to church. He wants to manifest in your workplace, everywhere you go. He wants to get right up in the middle of your life. <laughs> you say that way. He wants to get right up in the middle of my life. Hallelujah. I don't know if that was correct English, but it sounded good. Amen. He, he, he wants to get involved with your life. Yes. It wasn't just so you could go to heaven one day. It was so that he could live through you. Yes. Amen. That was the whole aspect of, of when you made Jesus the Lord of your life was he could now take up residence on the inside of you and you could be a walking one just like him. Just like Adam and Eve were in the garden, when he breathed into him the, the breath of life, he said he became another speaking spirit. Meaning, meaning, so when you made Jesus Lord of your life, he breathed on your life so you could be just like him. Amen? So you could walk just like him. Hallelujah. And so we've been talking about synergy. And I said, you'll see how this connects with marvels, wonders, and extraordinary manifestations. Because when the Lord told us to, to go to two services, he said, don't just go to two services. It's not just going to two services, but it's a season of synergy. And we're going to continue to unpack this throughout my time with you the rest of this year and into next year. And what that means, not just for us as individuals, but what it means for us as a church body and what it means on a larger scale of the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So go to uh, Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51. Before I, I read that, I, I want to just talk about our, our scripture with about synergy. And it says this in 1 Corinthians 3, 9. It says that we are laborers together with God. Laborers together with God. And that word laborers together in the Greek is synergos. And it's where we get our word synergy. It says we're laborers together with God. Yes. Say with God. with God. It says that we're God's husbandry. Meaning, meaning we are his cultivated field. Meaning God has put us in a position for us to produce fruit. Yeah. To produce something out of your life. You, you're not here just to take up space. You're not, you're not here just to go through life and get a job and, and do these things. All those things are great. And, and, and God has great things, you know, in, in life that we have a covenant that we can walk in and, and things. But it's ultimately realizing that everywhere I go, he wants to produce something out of my life. That's why you're his husbandry, meaning you are, you are his field that he wants to produce something in. And it says that, and we're his building. Amen. We're his building. We're laborers together with him. Meaning we're not doing it by ourselves. This isn't about Justin and how great Justin can be. But this is about what God can do in Justin's life. It's what God can do in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Jesus, in his life, it wasn't, it wasn't just because he was Jesus. You know, in John chapter 10, verse 30, he says, I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. Jesus knew everything that I do, everything, everywhere I go, everything I say, everything I have is all about who I'm connected to. See, Jesus, his whole aspect was, was I'm yielding my life to the Father. I'm yielding my life to be connected to the Father because it's as I'm connected to the Father, as I'm connected to my source, as I'm connected to him, he's going to make my life what it ought to be. So Jesus understood if he was going to experience synergy in his life, power in his life, it was going to come down to yielding to this connection. 
yielding to this connection. You know, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. It wasn't because of, because, wait, hey, hey, look, I'm Jesus. And because I'm Jesus, hey, I preach the gospel to the poor. Because I'm Jesus, I heal the broken heart. No, it's because the spirit of the Lord is on me. And see, Jesus had to yield to that. He had to yield to that. And you know what? In just every day of our lives, we have to yield to that relationship, yield to him to be that vessel that he can flow through. You know, it's like a like a it's like a light switch. And, you know, you don't see it, you know, in a light switch. But but behind that light switch, there's a box. You know what? And it's and it determines what I allow to flow through that box that determines whether that light's going to come on or not. So the thing is, a lot of times, a lot of times if we're doing our own thing, what happens is, is, is I might try to turn a switch on, but you know what? I'm not connected. I, I'm, I'm not connected. I'm not yielded to. I'm not surrendered to. And all the while, God is saying, I, I just want to do something great through your life. I, I love the fact that God can take, he can take something that's without void and form and make something that we stand back and look at in amazement of how beautiful it is. You know, the earth was without form and void, but yet something that was without form and void, he had the ability to make something amazing out of it. He took dirt, the dust of the ground, shaped it and molded it, and made something to where it's something that baffles scientists' minds. And no matter how much they study the human body, they still can't understand all the depths of it, depths that it is. He, he, God can take a mess. He can take mistakes. He can take something insignificant and in his hand, make something extraordinary with it. See, that's what you need to see. And, And this morning, you know, last time we were together, I talked about that he wants to use you. And this morning, I want to talk about he takes small things and makes them great. Let's look at Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51, verse 1 says, Hearken to me, I'm reading the Amplified, you who follow after rightness and justice, you who seek and inquire and require the Lord. Now, now he, he's talking to people that are doing something. He's not talking to everyone. Because he's saying hearken, meaning listen to me. You that are following rightness and you that are seek and inquiring of the Lord. You know, you're here today because you know what? You're doing that. You're here to require of the Lord. You're, you're here to seek the Lord. You're, you're here because you believe somehow there's something that you believe that there's something that you need when we come together as a church body. And see, every time you come in this, in this, in this house, whether it's a Sunday or Wednesday, you go to a small group, always put yourself in a position and say, God, I'm going to receive from you. I'm going to receive. Say that with me. I'm going to receive today what you have for me. So here he's talking to people that are are seeking something, seeking change in their life, seeking what the Lord has, seeking God's plan for their life. So this is someone that we could say really is surrendered. It's someone that put themselves in a position to say, you know what? I want God's way in my life. And I believe that that's why you're here this morning, whether your wife or your husband drug you here this morning or not, or your parents drug you here this morning or not, you're here because ultimately you want to see your life to go to another level. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So hearken to me, all you that follow after rightness and justice, you who seek and inquire the Lord. I love this in the Amplified, claiming him by necessity and by right. Meaning I'm claiming him and I'm doing this because not only do I need it in my life, It's my right, meaning I get to do this. You don't have to come to church. I get to go to church. You don't have to tithe. You get to tithe. You you see, it's it's this is me seeking the Lord. It's my right. Not only is it my right, but I need this. 
And he says this, look to the rock. So what does he want them to listen to? He says, look to the rock from which you were hewn into the hole in the quarry in which you were dug. Verse two, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him when he was but one, and I blessed him and made him many. Wow. He takes small things and makes them great. So here, as we're here today, what does he want us to receive? What does he want us to see this morning? He says, look to the rock from which you came from. Meaning, look at look where you came from. You came from me. Look at me. Meaning, why I have a plan for your life. It doesn't matter where you've been the last 15, 20, 30, 40 years. Don't, don't compare your future with your past. But understand, look to the rock in which you came from. Look who created you. Don't judge your past by where you've been and what you are and what other people have tried to shape and make your life to be. Realize you came from a rock. You came from the creator. And then he says, look to Abraham who bore you. Look to Abraham, your father, and Sarah who bore you. For I called him when he was but one, and I blessed him and made him many. See, this is his desire. When God was saying this, he goes, when I got hooked up with Abraham, when I got involved with Abraham, he was just one man. He was singular. He was limited. But yet when God, when synergy took place, when God happened to Abraham, see, Abraham didn't happen to God. God happened to Abraham. (laughs) And see, God wants to happen to you. And it says he was but one, but, but yet when I got connected with him, when I intersected his life, he became many. Now let's go to Genesis 12. So he says, look to Abraham. So we're going to look into Abraham, okay? Abraham. (laughs) Let's say Abraham chapter 12. (laughs) Genesis chapter 12. Verse 1 says, now the Lord said to Abraham. So, So when God said to Abraham, Abraham at first was just one, right? He was just one, but he made him many. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get thee out of your country and from your kindred and from your father's house unto a land that I'll show you. And I will make you, I'll make thee a great nation. Say great nation. nation. And he says, I will bless thee. Say bless bless thee. And I will make thy name great. Say my name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Say, I will be a blessing. Then he says, I will bless them that bless thee, curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Just hold your heart and say, say, in me me. shall all the families of the earth be blessed. blessed. Then verse 4 says, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken. You know, what we have to understand here is when God showed up, Abram was one, but we saw in Isaiah that it was to make him many. And here we see God spoke into his destiny, spoke into his future and said, I'm going to do something in you. I'm going to do something in your life that you could never do on your own. I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to make you famous. I'm going to bless you and you're going to be a blessing. And in you, all the nations are going to be blessed. In you, I'm going to do something so amazing that it's going to cause effect. It's going to affect generations after you. But yet Abraham had to do something. He had to obey. If Abraham had just stayed there, see, see the fulfillment of it came in verse four. And so Abraham departed. See, sometimes we want to stay where we are and expect that we're going to be blessed. Sometimes we want to keep doing the things we've always done and expect to increase. But Abraham had to do something different. And so it's the same aspect of surrender. Just as Jesus had to surrender, Abraham had to surrender. 
to this word. And, and in order for him to surrender, it, see, by him departing, it now allowed God to hook up with Abraham. It allowed him to get hooked up with Abraham so God could do something amazing in his life. So he could do something in something that one time was one and all of a sudden in the future now is going to be many. And I want to encourage you the same thing that you might, your life might be small right now, but realize God wants to do greatness through your life. He wants to do something amazing through your life. He wants to do something beyond what you could ask, think, dream, or imagine. He wants to do something in your finances that, that you have never, that you couldn't right now you couldn't even think about it, but he wants to do that. But the whole aspect is getting hooked up with him. That's what tithing is all about. It's getting hooked up with him. That's what, that's what, that's what being in the word is about. It's about getting hooked up with him. That's what worship is all about. It's about getting hooked up with him. And it's as you get hooked up with him, he takes something that's small and makes it great. Go to first Peter chapter two. Father. Thank you, Father. First Peter chapter 2. Let's look at verse 9. Now he's speaking to you and I. He was speaking to Abraham and said, he was going to make him a great nation. Now look at this. It says, but you are a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You know, there's, we can look at the word and we can say, oh, well, that was in the Old Testament or that was just that person. Well, he chose Abraham and he is the, our father in the faith. But here, see that he's chosen you. See, you're, you're a chosen generation. You're a royal priest. He picked you. He picked you and me. You are a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation, a peculiar people. Now, that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Man, look to your neighbor and say, I'm a chosen generation. A chosen generation. Say, I'm a, royal priesthood. I'm a royal priesthood. Say, I'm a holy nation. I'm a holy nation. And say, I'm a peculiar people. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> but you're chosen for something. So first, first let's, let's, let's wrap our, our thinking around this, that you've been chosen for such a time as this. Just wrap your mind that God chose you when you were nothing to make you something great. God chose you when you were a failure to make you something extraordinary. You know, this ministry that, that we're a part of, that we have the privilege to be a part of in, in February will be 50 years. And there's this message that's gone out from this ministry for 50 years has been talk people into winning. You know, might not say it right, but, you know, uh, up to debt and eyeballs, marriage hanging on by a thread, but God. <laughs> and it says he's a master at making champions out of nobodies. That's what this message, this is the message of this ministry is all about. So realizing that you're a chosen generation, you're a real royal priesthood. It doesn't matter what you feel. It doesn't matter what you've seen in the past. It's what you need to know what God sees you as now. You're a chosen generation, a royal priest. There's something significant about you. There's something particular, in it, it, significant that no one else in this room can do but you. There's people that you can touch and reach that no one else will reach but you. And so we've been chosen to do something. It says to show forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Meaning, meaning he reached down and picked you up when you were nothing to bring you into light, to bring you into something that you, that, so, so to unlimited possibilities. That's what light represents. And there's something in us to show forth his praises. Now, when we get this idea of show forth his praises, there's this thing of we can come into church and saying, I'm praising the Lord right now. I'm praising the Lord right now. Let's clap. We're praising. Everyone clap your hands. We're praising right now. And so we, we, we have this idea that that's what he's talking about here. No. But this word praises, now get this, this word praises is to declare the wholeness of salvation. 
to, de to declare the wholeness of complete salvation. Hallelujah. It says, the, actually, the word praise is the whole work of salvation. And this comes from a root word, actually, the word we get power from. So when it says that you're chosen to show forth his praises, it's not for you to sing a song. But when he says, show forth your praises, it's for, it's for you to reveal the whole work of salvation through power. See, you were chosen to show forth the whole of salvation. See, God wants to not just for you to go to heaven one day. That's, he, yeah, that's great. But, but the re reality of it is he chose you so he could show the completeness of salvation through your life. Hallelujah. Spirit, soul, and body. Totally bring total salvation. I Meaning we're to reveal deliverance to salvation, healing, manifestation, in the glory of God, prosperity. That's what Jesus did when he said, the spirit is on me. It was to do what? And everything that Jesus said had to do with a different aspect of humanity. He dealt with poverty. He dealt with sickness. He dealt with bondage. He dealt with everything that, that came into man because of sin. And so when Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, what was he saying? He was, making, he was showing forth the praises of God. He was declaring what God desires to do in the earth. Thank you, Father. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Thank you, Father. To show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his light. He takes small things and makes them great. He takes insignificant things and makes them extraordinary. Thank you, Father. Let's look at verse 20. For the sake of time, let's do 26. It says, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise after the flesh and not many mighty, not many noble are called. Now, hear that. He goes, You see, brethren, how not many wise men, not many, not men after the flesh, not many that are mighty, and not many that are noble. 1 Corinthians 1, 26. What did I say? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, correct me. Yeah. You're like, is that Justin's translation? Let's... So I'll start back at 26. For you see your calling, brethren. See, you're a royal priesthood. You're a holy... There's a calling on your life. And it's not just to stay, it's not about standing behind a pulpit somewhere. You're called. No matter where you go, you're called. And he says, for your calling, brethren, how that not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, and not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Now, the word foolish things there mean is someone without learning. To put to shame, really in the, the terminology says to put to shame the Greek philosopher. But he chose the foolish things to confound the wise. And God had chosen the weak things of the world. What, what are the weak things here? They're unable to do anything. To confound the ones who have great influence, rank, or riches. And he takes the weak things of this world to confound the things that are mighty. And he takes the base things of this world... And the things that are despised. The word base there means the things that no one cares about. The things despised are those things that are rejected. So here, get this. He chooses those that no one cares about. He chooses those everyone else rejects. He chooses those that are unable to do anything. He chooses those in whom someone with no learning. I'm so glad I fit into this category. <laughs> Or at one time in my life, fit in this category. Now, now, hear me. It's not, he says, it doesn't say he doesn't choose anyone that's rich, anyone that's noble, or any. He says, it's hard to find many. He goes, not many that are of riches, not many who are noble, not many who are strong. Why? 
Because people that have it all together sometimes don't need someone else. That's why it, it, it's not that he doesn't want to use someone that's rich. He doesn't want to use someone that's rank, of rank or influence. It's not that he, he's looking for just stupid people. That's not the issue. The issue, he's looking for surrendered people. He's looking for, that's why, that's why Jesus told the disciples, he said, it's a hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because a rich man can't take his riches to heaven. Because he has to realize that I need to submit my life to God. It's not that, we know that we're a prosperity church. We're not, it's not God, God wants you rich. He wants you wealthy. The issue is he doesn't want wealth and riches to take over your life. He doesn't want those things to be your God. So here he says that he calls those things that are small. He calls those things that everyone else looks down on. He calls those things to confound the mighty, to confound the strong, to confound the Greek philosopher. Because there's something that God can do through a vessel that he can't, a, a, a yielded vessel that he can't do through, through worldly people. And that's manifest his glory. See, that's, he wants to manifest his glory through a vessel. But the only way to manifest his glory and manifest power and manifest strength through is through a yielded vessel like Jesus was. If you look at verse 28, it says, and the base things of this world and the things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. Man, so he... He, he takes these people that no one cares about and he does something in their life that changes someone else's life. Man. He takes small things and makes them great. Go to Acts chapter 2. Thank you, Father. Acts chapter 2. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So we can have this idea. Well, I, I, Pastor, I know he, you know, God used Abraham. I, I know God came on David and used David. I know, you know, he used Gideon. I, I know he used Gideon and, and how, how Gideon, what he was just one man and he was, he was the poorest in his family. He, he had nothing. He, he was the least in his father's house. But, but yet God, God, yeah, God got involved with him and, and, and through that synergy that, that he was able to defeat an army as one man. And, and he was able to defeat thousands of people with just himself and 300 men. And yet, God, I, I know you, you did things through Elijah. I know you did things through Elisha. I know you did things through, through, through the prophets. I, I know you spoke things. I know you did things through Jesus. I, I, I know that you did things, you know, when the, when the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. I know that that thing had to happen because we needed the church to start. And, and, and we understand all that. But what about me? What, what about me? You, you, you see, you can get so bogged down by mis- understandings of what ministry is. Yeah, there's an aspect of ministry that is pulpit, that is on the mission field. There are aspects of that, but, but realize everywhere you go, you're a minister. Everywhere you go, you're a minister of reconciliation. You, know, you, you see, you know, say, you say, well, pastor, I'm just a truck driver. Well, I, I'm just, a, I'm just a, a single mom. I'm, I'm just an at-home mom. I'm, I'm just... I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. See, God sees great, but we say, well, I'm just. Well, I, I don't, I, I don't have, a, a, I've been divorced. I've been, I've, I've made mistakes. I've met challenges and I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just a failure. I'm just. And every time we say that, we limit the greatness that God sees in us. You see, the Spirit of God wasn't just poured out for ministers. <laughs> let, let, let's look at Acts chapter 2. Verse 14. 
But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to him, You men of Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, seeing it is but nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is that. Say, this is that. And I will, and it shall come, upon, come to pass in the last days, says God, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It doesn't say I will pull out my spirit on ministers. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. But realize when the Holy Spirit came, understand it was what God had spoken in the book of Joel. I pour out my spirit on all flesh, all flesh. And your young men shall see vision. I pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on your servants and on your handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Man, men servants, maid servants, young, old. See, what I see here is, is God wants a church filled with people, all different ages, all different races, all different backgrounds, and God wants to flow through he wants to prophesy through. He wants to lay hands on through. He wants to do extraordinary things through the church because he wanted to take something that started with just 120 people in a upper room to where it changes, the, fa changes the, the whole face of the earth. The whole face of the earth. That the glory of God would cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. He wants to pour his on all flesh. It, you're not just anything. You are a chosen generation. Yeah, right now you may be small, but I want you to know he desires to make you great. He desires to great, do great things. If he could take something without form and void as the universe and the cosmos and fling it into being with just a word, what could he do with your life? If he could measure the, all the waters in the sea from his thumb to his pinky finger, what could he do in your life? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're not just anything. Your gods. And no matter where you are, he wants to flow through you. I'm going to tell you a story that happened to me in 1990. Um, thank you, Father. It was May of 1998. Thank you, Father. I had, um, I had just gone through a divorce. I was 24 years old. And I was sitting home praying and, and seeking the Lord about what's the next steps for my life. And those thoughts kept coming. I'm just this or I'm just that. I hadn't moved to Texas yet. I didn't know what I was, what I was going to be doing yet. I didn't even hear Dr. Sell preach for the first time until November of that year. But I remember laying in bed and I was watching a, a friend's dog. And it was about six in the morning on, on Saturday, a Saturday morning. And I, the, 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 the dog was barking and I was like, what's going on? And, and the dog kept running and, and went to the front door of the house. And I was like, what? What's going on? So I go to the front door and there's no one there. So I go back upstairs and lay back down and I'm just sitting there. And I hear the dog came upstairs, barked again, barked all the way down and came to the front door. I go in, there's, not, there's no one at the front door. I'm going, what's going on? And so I go back upstairs and I'm like, what's up with this dog? I was like, I mean, I'm not a pet person. 
<laughs> Sorry if you are, but. And all of a sudden I hear screaming. I lived on about an acre and three quarters. Um, so I had about almost an acre of land from my backyard to, um, it was Route 113. It runs, you know, mostly it runs all the way up through Virginia and um, Delaware and, and so forth. And, and, and the dog's barking. So I go to the front door, but I hear screaming. And so I go outside to the front door and there's no one there, but yet I hear, but all of a sudden now I could hear screaming. And coming around the corner was a family. And, and the family is holding a, a, a little girl and the little girl is purple. And I, all I, I, did, I took her out, I took her out of arms and I put her on my chest and all I knew to do was pray in the spirit. All I knew to do was pray in the spirit. We, they come into my house. I didn't know these people. You know, I, I, do you have that picture, Ron? Did Tessa send you that picture? Okay. Well, it was pretty much a map. They, were, they lived in New Jersey, and they were coming from North Carolina. And they just happened to stop right behind my house. And so I take the child... And as I'm coming to the house, I'm praying in the Holy, Holy Ghost. I don't know if these people were Christians. I, no, I, was not, I wasn't even thinking about it. And I, I put the child on the ground. You know, I, I, I tell them where the phone was. And, and they called 911. And, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm just sitting there and I just place my hand on, on the little girl's chest. And here she is. She's purple. I mean, her face, is, like she cannot breathe. She's starting to convulse and her eyes are rolled back in her head. And I'm like, I'm just just praying in the Holy Ghost. And, and so, so, what I'm, so I hear the lady talking to 911 and I'm praying, but at the same time, I'm doing the things they're saying, put some under her neck. And they told me to do different things. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, her complexion came back. Everything was exactly the way, way it needed to be. And she was fine. And, and she looked at her and she was like, what happened? And what had happened is she had an allergic reaction to medicine and her throat closed up. But I think, I, I think what, I was like, I was just a route salesman for a uniform company. Oh, I had just gone through a divorce. Felt like a failure. And so I'm like, that house, like God wants to use me. God, of all the houses they could have stopped behind in a nine-hour drive, they happened to stop behind my house. You say, well, that was just a coincidence. I don't know. That's not. And the thing is, the dog was going to the door long before they ever got on my property. <laughs> You're not just, he wants to pour his spirit out on all flesh for the sons and daughters to prophesy. That's declare. That's to show forth salvation. Thank you, Father. And stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Just close your eyes and just listen to the scripture in the Passion Translation. It's Colossians chapter one. Just receive what this has to say. It says, there is a divine mystery, a secret surprise that has been concealed from the world for generations, but now is being revealed, is now being revealed unfolded and manifested for every holy believer to experience. Now get that, for every holy believer to experience. Every holy believer to experience. It was hidden generations past, 
but now is revealed and it's unfolded and manifested for every holy believer to experience. Living within you is Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with riches of glory for his people. And God wants everyone to know it. King James says that it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. You're not just, you have Christ in you, the hope of glory. Synergy is about Christ being in you. Synergy is it about the anointing being in you. Synergy is about the fact that he has poured his spirit out on all flesh to work in you and to work through you. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. In the King James, the next verse after that, it says that we might present all men Meaning this Christ in us is for a reason. This Christ in us has a, has, a, has a purpose. It's not just so we have goosebumps. It's not just so I can say I'm a Christian, but Christ is in me. It says that I might present all men perfect in Christ Jesus. Meaning this Christ in me has an assignment. This Christ in me is that I might present other men perfect in Christ Jesus. That you might help and aid in people's messes and mistakes and failures and that you might be able to show forth his salvation in their lives. Christ is in you, not so you can put people down, but Christ is in you to raise people up. Christ is in you is to love him the way that he loves them, to, to draw them up to a higher level, to, to pour in exactly what they need, to, to pour in their, into their hurts, to bind up the brokenhearted. That's what Christ is in you for. Yeah to present all men perfect in Christ Jesus. And then it goes on and says, and it says, that works in me mightily. That, Christ in me, is working in me mightily. It's working in you mightily. It's that work in you. When he called Abraham, he was but one, but God made him many. He's called you as just one, but you know what? He's called you to reach many. He's called you to love many. He's called you to touch many. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for the anointing in this place today. Thank you for your power in this place today. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I, I don't want to just be whatever my occupation is anymore. I don't just want to be what people have known me as in the past. I don't just want to be, well, you know, this guy, or I don't want to just be this person's wife or just be this person's husband or well, I'm just this person's mother or this person's father. I just don't just want to be that. Yeah, those are your responsibilities, those things. But what I want to say, I want, I'm, speaking into, I'm speaking into your destiny this morning. I'm speaking into, into the, the, the DNA of God that's on the inside of you. Because this DNA of God is it's a measure of faith that every single person that's created on the face of the earth is crying out for is, what am I here for? I'm speaking into that this morning. And you say, Pastor, I, I just want to be used by God. See, that's the only just you need to focus on. I just want to be used by God. 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 I just want to be used by... If that's you, just lift your hands to heaven this morning. Oh, and just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. If you're here this morning, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. If you died today and you don't know where you would spend eternity, I want you to come to the altar right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Destiny is calling. Pray in the Holy Ghost, church. Destiny is calling you this morning. And you're like, Pastor, I, I've I, I, need, a I need to make a change. I don't, I, I, I've come to a, a new God. I, 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 
I, I, I used to serve God. I used to go to church, but everything's been kind of, I've been so me focused. And, and you know what? I don't know if I leave this place today and died. I don't know where I'd spend eternity. If that's you, just come to the altar. It's nothing to be ashamed of. We're here to rejoice with you. Hallelujah. We rejoice with them that rejoice. Oh, hallelujah. If you're here this morning, you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He wants to come in, hallelujah, and fill you to overflowing. Fill you to overflowing. Ha fill you to overflowing. When the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, they went out. They went out. They didn't, they didn't, keep, they didn't keep him in the upper room. They didn't keep the Spirit of God in the upper room, but, but they, they came out of that upper room and they infect and change the world. And what happened on that day, on the day of Pentecost, is still affecting people today. So if that's you, to get born again, to rededicate your life or be filled with the Holy Spirit, come to the altar. Oh, Father, I thank you for a birthing in this church. I thank you for a birthing in this church. Hallelujah, birthing of ministries, birthing of callings, birthing of mandates. Hallelujah, birthing, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, birthing of businesses. Birthing of ideas and creativity and inventions. Birthing. Birthing of ministries. Birthing of ministries. A birthing of a people group. A birthing of. Uh, of that God's going to speak to you. There's some here that God's going to speak to you, and there's going to be some people that He's calling you to. It may be young people, it could be senior citizens, it could be something, but, but there's going to be something that you're going to do out of this church and it's going to infect the entire community. It's going to infect the entire thing that God's calling you to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, for a birthing, a birthing for marvels, wonders, extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. Oh, Father, we thank you for that as a church. We come into agreement, Father that that's gonna happen in 2019. Hallelujah, that signs and wonders. Oh, marvels, wonders, extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of God. Hallelujah, that's just not gonna happen in this church, but that's gonna happen through our lives, through every person that's in this place today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, if you desire to be used by God, just lift your hands and say, Father, here I am, send me. Here am I, send me. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 If you're here this morning and you have, a, you have a pinched nerve on the back, I think it's the right side of your, your neck right here, just come to the altar real quick. Hallelujah. One thing we're here always ready to do is, is, is to pray for the sick. Amen. That's part of our mandates as believers. I see your face and you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Be made whole in Jesus. Be made whole in, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Oh, this pressure has to cease. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Start to do what you couldn't do before. Is the pain gone? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is
that he's going to pour so much in so fast that it's going to push out all those other things. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Man, it's to be a vessel that he can flow through. And it's not about working it up. It's not trying to make something happen. You know, that time when that child came to my, came to my house and that family, all I did, I just did what, it just, I, I didn't have to think about it. It was just a response. Just a response. So it's not something you have to work up here. Just get full of God. Just get full of God. And when you're in those situations, it'll just be a response. You receive this word today? Give him a shout of praise. You receive that word today? God is good. You can be seated. Now, did you have anything? Are you good? Hallelujah. Well, this morning, we're going we're gonna to receive a missions offering uh, for our Africa trip. We leave next Saturday. We go on until December 7th. I'm sorry, yeah, this Saturday coming up. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that they gave us a budget for about a week and a half or so ago, we're doing another community outreach uh, where they bring in a lot of people from the community. Uh, we, they do a soccer thing. There's a run. And last year, the year when we were there, there was um, some, you know, just all t types of people there, Muslim, Buddhist, different backgrounds, all come to this. And, and, and so I told them we do it this year. I told um, Car Pastor Carla, I said, well, this year, because there's so many different people, I want us to, I want us to preach the gospel. I want us to preach the gospel. And, and also with that, they, we feed the whole community as well. And so the budget for that is uh, $1,900. And, and so that's what, whatever you said today is going to go towards, you know, that $1,900 of, of paying for the food for that community, um, which, which is, it's in the area of the church, around the church where they do this. It's on the, the events on the church grounds, um, but it's people all over the community uh, in that area. And so that's what these finances will go, go towards. So, so as you're preparing to give, you're doing text to give, you just do the number. And on the other side, you, you do like, you know, a million dollars missions. So... <laughs> So they say, one day, one day, I, I'm, Annette and I are believing that we're going to sow a million dollars one time to missions. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Don't ever say, oh, I can't see myself doing that. No. You need to change your seer. <laughs> Amen. So as you're, as you're giving, uh, 
everything will go towards, towards that. So let's pray over it. Father, I just thank you for the opportunity to give into, your, into missions. You, Father, you said in your word, Lord, that true religious worship is to minister to the widows and minister to the orphans. So, Father, I thank you as we go to Africa, not only are we ministering to, to school, school kids, uh, uh, orphanages, not only ministering to, to college-age kids and, and so forth, but, Father, I thank you the opportunity to pour in to every person, Lord, and this, as we're part of this as a church, I thank you, Lord, that souls will come into the kingdom of God at this event in two Saturdays from now. So, Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Ushers, you receive the offering, and while they're doing that, I'm going to have the Af those that are going to Africa with us come on up. Come on up. They all might not be here. Hallelujah. There's Sandra. There's Ann. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You know, Vic and Jim Gordon, they're actually, they're, they're flying with us. Um, and then on Tuesday, that following Tuesday, they're going to leave and go to Tanzania. And so they're going to be doing ministry in Tanzania and we'll be doing work in Kenya. So, so I believe that this is a God-ordained team and, and just believing that supernatural things are going to take place. Amen. So while they're still receiving the offering, just stretch your hands towards this team. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, Father, I just thank you, Lord. You told, Jesus told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, as a church and as believers, even those that have sown into this, this, this ministry, Lord, I thank you that, that they're going just like we're going, even though they're still here. I thank you that they're sending us. And, and I thank you, Father, that as we go, I thank you that you make crooked places straight. Lord, I declare over this team that we are always in the right place at the right time. I declare angels surround about us. Everywhere we go, the glory of God is on us. Everywhere we go, the favor of God goes before us. I think everywhere we go, the light of the gospel is preached. I thank you, Lord. There's something about this team that as we go, people will recognize the light of the gospel. They'll recognize the anointing. They'll recognize the glory. They'll recognize the glory. It'll be just like in the book of Acts that said, we can tell that you've been with Jesus. So, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that as we go out from this church to, to other churches and to other, uh, other events, Lord, I thank you that we're carrying that same grace that's on this body there. And I thank you, Lord, that we will make winners in life. We will see people healed. We will see people made whole. We will see people restored. We thank you that marriages will be restored. I thank you, Father, that, 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 that you are preparing in advance, preparing hearts, preparing hearts in advance. People that are even hearing about us coming. I thank you, Lord, just like, just like Zacchaeus, that, that as he heard that Jesus was coming to town, I thank you, Lord, there'll be those that will hear that we're coming to town and they'll show up and they'll come and they'll get their miracle. They'll get deliverance. They'll get change. And, and Father, I thank you that, that, that the areas that we go will not be the same because of the word and the presence. And we thank you, Father, that we are a nations-minded church. And we thank you for it. Thank you for divine protection. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good.